I just want to provide a short sort of update and overview about what we're doing with our land potential knowledge system project. Um, this 2014 has been the first of uh, the first year of a five-year project. A lot of what I'll show is work that's been done um, pretty much since almost exactly a year ago, I guess, when, when Adam arrived at the Hornada um, and then I arrived here in February. Um, so the sort of basis and the premise for our for our project is to use cell phones and cell phone applications along with the internet uh, to provide tools for land managers to help provide supportive tools for land management decisions. Um, and so the things that we really hope to do are to be able to increase access to knowledge and existing information. A lot of people in the world are making decisions that about managing their land uh, without easy access to a lot of information that is available. In many places it's not very easy to get information about <laughs> soils or plant communities, uh, weather, climate. So we hope to, to have a positive impact there. Uh, and we also want to sort of tailor the information that we give to people and make it specific to their land and their soil and their needs. Um, and finally, as the project moves forward, uh, we hope to connect people who are managing similar types of lands uh, with the idea that they will then be able to share their individual knowledge uh, about their management successes and failures with one another. And so the model that we're working with um, is the idea that we can gather information um, from our users via cell phone applications, that they can be in the field and sort of upload data with the phone um, and that we can capture that data uh, in servers and in, and in the cloud of, of the internet um, and process it and provide them with meaningful information right back to their phone. Um, and one of the critical issues that we want to deal with um, is soil management and soil variability. So the photo there on this slide shows, you know, two different soils that are approximately 150 meters from one another uh, in Namibia. And so the local, local knowledge there suggests that, that there's a darker soil and that darker soil is good for cropping uh, and resilient to drought and that this other soil is a lighter soil and that's not good for cropping and it's not very resilient to drought. And so this information exists locally, but um, you know, this is sort of a broader issue that a, that a lot of people in this building work on, which is that the maps and the information that we have about soil uh, are not really detailed enough to provide um, people with, with management level information at the, at the scale of a farm or a site. Um, so what we're hoping is that we can get technology to work um, well enough that we can provide that that level of and scale of information and so where we're at right now with this model here is that we you know we have applications that we can collect data from the field and we can capture that information in our cloud servers and then we can make predictions about the potential of the productivity or degradation and erosion risk for someone's soil um, and then in the future we hope that our system will get sophisticated enough that based on what a user provides for us, we can then ask them more additional specific questions about their site and about what they're doing uh, and ultimately provide them with some management options that might be suitable for their landscape. So our core sort of cell phone application, our, our land PKS application, um, really has come a long way. Adam has led the development of this. Um, a user essentially goes through a list of screens, a series of screens to, to characterize their site. We call it site characterization. So they provide information about the land cover, about the slope, about the shape of the slope. Uh, and then we ask them to uh, sort of carefully dig a hole in, in depth increments and make simple field <coughs> observations about the soil at, at each of those depth increments and to enter that all into the app. Um, and so some things that we've tried to do are to use a lot of images within the application. A lot of the screens are image focused so that someone doesn't need to, to read English uh, to use the application. Um, and then this other image here with the hands, uh, we've made sort of a decision tree for doing the soil texture by feel method. Many of you, if you ever took soil science classes, you learned um, you know, how to take a handful of soil and wet it and go through a series of questions 
uh, and arrive at, at, a, at an estimate for what the soil texture class is. Uh, so we've made a, an app that will guide you through that process. And if you don't understand the questions such as does the soil form a ribbon, uh, you can push those question marks and a little video, a uh, short video clip will come up and show you what, what that's asking you to do. Um, so this is uh, one of the main soil properties that we try to gather information on. And then what happens, this is sort of the, the schematic of the, the system, is the user provides us with that information and when they, if they are not, if they don't have an internet connection in the field, then the app holds onto their information until they have a connection. And then it sends it uh, via the internet to a server here at the Hornada. Um, and the first thing that we do is, is to put the information that they've given us into a database. Uh, and then the, the next thing that we do is we take the coordinates from their phone, from the phone GPS, and we use that to gather values um, out of a few, few dozen sort of regional and global geospatial data sets about topography and weather um, and existing soil maps and land cover. And we pull values out of all those files and store them for the site. Um, and then a combination of sort of the direct measurements that the users made about their soil and their topography and, and the geospatial data that we've extracted, we, we run through a simulation model called APEX. So APEX is a model that simulates crop growth and it simulates erosion and carbon dynamics. So we take this information and we run it through the simulation. Um, and then we take pieces of all of that and sort of create a custom output for the users uh, for their site. Um, and this really is sort of a preliminary version of this system. We, we are actively working at the moment to incorporate more models and more ways of looking at the landscape, some bigger picture things than just this point data. Um, but this is sort of our first, first crack at providing someone predictions about the productivity potential and erosion. Um, and we'll just sort of in keep incorporating um, computing tools into this to provide more information. And so then this is what a user receives on the app. What we do with our model outputs is, is scale them in relation to one another. So the user gets information if they give us multiple plots. And then we say, well, this is, you know, the model suggests this is the most productive plot. Um, and these are how these other plots uh, relate to that one. You know, th these are less productive or not productive at all. This plot has the highest erosion um, and these others, you know, uh, so everything is in relation to the highest values that we, we receive. Um, and a couple of reasons for that. I mean, number one is just that we don't want to um, be telling people through this means that we think that they can grow five tons of maize on a site or something like that. That uh, feels irresponsible to us. Um, and secondly, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback that people sort of like this metric of comparison. Um, so really that's what we're working on at the moment is if you give us multiple sites, we can make a comparison about them for productivity or erosion. And then you can also look on your outputs and have a map of, of everywhere that you've used the application uh, and what the numeric results that you got for each of those points was. And so we've had two pilot projects this year where we've been um, testing this in the field. Uh, the funding that we have is we have a mandate to work in semi-arid rangelands in sub-Saharan Africa. So we've been testing the app in uh, rangelands in Kenya and Namibia. Um, and in both cases, it's, the landscapes look very similar to the landscape here. So we're sort of in similar landscapes to begin with. Um, but in Kenya, the app's being tested in community wildlife conservancies. And so these are areas where large tracts of land have been set aside for wildlife, but the local communities also graze their animals in them. Um, the Northern Rangeland Trust is sort of a, um, a body, an organization that, that pulls in funding and provides extension services in those areas. And the initial focus in there has been on identifying areas for restoration. They have a lot of degraded land and they have limited time and money to put into restoring grasses. So our hope is to be able to predict which soils will respond best to restoration. 
And so this project really is um, being led by Adam and by David Comedi, who's out in the field working in these areas. Um, the second project has been in Namibia, where we've been testing the app with um, <coughs> government ministries in Namibia. And we also had a private contractor who collected a lot of data for us there. Some of you remember the big boxes of phones that we had here a few months ago that went to Namibia. Um, the focus there really is Namibia has uh, very little data on their soils. The whole nation of Namibia has 35 publicly available soil profiles, uh, which I'm sure is far less than the Hornada Basin. Um, and so what we're trying to do there is just gauge information about spatial distribution and the production potential of their soils. Uh, and Jeff really has been leading the Namibia project. So finally, our, <coughs> our hope with this really is not to, to replace conversations and replace interactions um, between extension people and managers, but to just provide more information for those co conversations when they take place. Uh, and so we like this picture a lot for our project because we have David Comedi there in the red shirt, the PhD researcher with our group. Uh, and he's talking with the, the gentleman in the gray shirt as an extension agent out there. Uh, and those other two guys are community members who have influence over grazing decisions in their communities. Uh, so this is sort of the kind of conversation that we want to help support. Uh, we have a lot more information on our website. 